Hello and welcome back to my kitchen again. Today I'm going to share with you a recipe that's been in our family. I guess mama, my mama made these since probably 1945 and then she taught me how to do it and it's been just a real favorite. So let me tell you what that you do to um, and then you can multiply it by as many as you want to make. But the original recipe was to one cup of all-purpose flour. You use one teaspoon of salt, a, a fourth of a cup of Crisco, and a third of a cup of cold water. Now when I'm making this for our family, like for Christmas or something, Thanksgiving, whatever, big, big gathering, I do four or five times that recipe, but today I'm going to do just three times. So I'm using three cups of flour, three teaspoons of pink Himalayan salt, one cup of water, because it's a third per cup of flour, and three-fourths of a cup of Crisco. Now, I've already got my flour in my food processor, and I'm going to put my salt in. And I just give that a little whiz, just to blend the salt in with it. And then you add in your Crisco, and it's kind of like if you're making a pie crust. You want it to get crumbly to where it looks kind of like cornmeal or something, just to blend it all through. the mixture. And the neat thing about using a food processor is when the dough is ready, it cleans the sides of the bowl and kind of balls up and you know that, that then your dumplings are ready to take out and roll. So let me get this blended and I will show you. See, it just kind of looks like cornmeal. You want it to just be blended like that. And then you slowly add in your water. With the, with the food processor running, you want to drizzle in your water. According to the humidity, sometimes it takes a little bit more water or maybe you've added a whole cup and you need a little bit more flour, but today this was perfect. Do you see how the dough has balled up? That lets me know that it's ready for me to take over to the counter and roll out and make my dumplings. So I'll get everything set up to do that and um, then I'll bring you back. Well, I've got my dough. Uh, it's rested a little while while I was getting everything else ready. But I decided that I would use some of my canned chicken, and this is mixed dark and white meat. I buy the boneless breast and boneless thighs. And uh, so I had to make my broth. So I used a gallon of water. And to that gallon of water, I added about a third of a cup of better than bouillon, chicken bouillon. I put in about three tablespoons of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. You know me and my onion and garlic powder. And I didn't salt it because of the bouillon. And then I added one can of, of cream of chicken soup. And I added one, I think it's a 12 ounce can, the large can of evaporated milk. And it's delicious. And then I put some black pepper in it. So I'm going to add my chicken and let it be heating while I roll the dumplings out. Now, most of the time when I use what I've canned, it kind of shreds on me, but that's okay because, you know, you either want a big bite of chicken or you don't. Most of ours, the dumplings is what everybody's wanting, so that's going to work out just fine. Let me get my chicken in here where it can heat. 
it's so convenient to have it um, already canned and not have to worry about thawing and boiling your chicken. And I hit the jackpot on this. A little store down the road had um, boneless skinless thighs for $1.25 a pound. And their boneless breasts were $1.25, which is unusual. So I had to buy some and can it. Okay, this is a wonderful mat, and it's silicon. I ordered it off of Amazon. Nothing sticks to it. But I still put flour down because you want a little bit of flour on each side of your dumplings. That helps to thicken your juice and it keeps them from sticking together because when you drop them in the broth you need to do it one at a time take your spoon and scrooge them around because you don't want them to make a big blob of dough that doesn't cook you want them individual dumplings in the in the water so I'm gonna take my rolling pin and uh, this rolling pin has been mine for nearly 49 years my sister-in-law Irma gave me this when my husband and I married and it's been well used and it's still perfect and I think of her every time I use it okay I just roll the dumplings out and I like to get them just about as thin as I can I don't like to get a dumpling that tastes like raw dough I like them thin enough that that they cook when you put them into the broth you want your broth boiling hot and then once you get them all in there, you might cut it down a little bit. But you don't ever want to simmer your dumplings because if you have it on simmer, it's going to turn into dumpling soup. They're going to disintegrate on you. So you need to have good hot uh, water or broth while you're cooking them because you want them to cook through and not be doughy. And I just got this neat, again, Pampered Chef, a little roller that I can cut it with. And I like to sprinkle a little flour on the top. Because I like for my broth to be thick. Now I'm going to show y'all how I do this one. And then I'm going to finish them up and I will show you the finished product in a little bit. I, I don't like them real big, so sometimes I have to go back and adjust. Now what I generally do is I take a, a plate of some kind and I just put my dumplings on it. And I, as long as there's flour between them, you can pick them up. And remember I put flour on the bottom and the top. Sometimes I'll put me another little pile there and dunk them in it before I put them on my plate. But I'll get them all cut up just like I'm doing right now. And then my broth will be boiling, and I will drop them into the boiling broth. Takes them about 20 minutes to cook, but I always get you one. You know, it's legal to get you a bite and taste of it, and make sure that they're as done as you want them. So, because I did three times the recipe, I've divided my dough into three balls, and I will roll it out like that. That's kind of how I judge how much at a time I roll out. It's, easy, it's manageable. Now this is the recipe that my mama made all my life. She took it to family reunions and all. So I probably got some cousins that learned how to make Aunt Stell's dumplings today. Some of them have asked me for the recipe and her method. And Now, to be honest, mama didn't own a Cuisinart food processor in the early days. She mixed hers up in her Sunbeam Mix Master. And then later she got, you know, up in high cotton and she got her a KitchenAid. But uh, I've been using my Cuisinart for years and it just, I just love the way it hops up on there and lets you know it's ready. Okay, let's see if I can do this without getting flour everywhere. See, I've got the dumplings cut in the little pieces. And I'm just going to continue to do that. And then when I get them all done in the pot, I'll come back and let y'all see. Okay, the broth is starting to boil. And uh, I'm getting ready to start putting my rolled and cut dumplings in. So here we go. I'm going to put, uh, you see I just drop them in. And when they start like they're floating up on top of each other, I'll stop and gently, now you don't stir them like you're whipping them around. 
but I will uh, stop and stir them around where they won't stick together and be a big globby mess in there because we like to eat our dumplings cooked all the way through and it'll take a little bit to get them all in here doing it uh, like this but it's worth it's worth it because it makes them cook better to have them separated you know when you have dumplings it's kind of family reunion meal so you it's legal to put whatever you want to with them that that one day so I'm not sure what I'm gonna fix to go with these probably a little potato salad or maybe a maybe just some greens I'm not sure but I'll have my dumplings made and then I'll decide and on see I just stuff. saw a couple of them drop in there stuck together so I'm just gonna barely scooch them around in here so they'll be separated and then I've got one more light cup of the dough that I rolled out that I need to get in the broth and you know they're gonna cook about 20 minutes and then I'll get one out and taste it to see if it's done yet I'll bring y'all back in just a minute when we get, um, when they've cooked. Seem like a minute to y'all. It's going to be 20 or 30 minutes here. But I'll bring you back to, to see what the finished product looks like. Let me finish getting these last few in. Okay, we'll be back in just a little bit and I will show you what they look like when they're finished. Okay, here we are. Uh, I'm going to try to get close where you can see the actual dumplings. They are delicious. So I hope y'all will try the recipe and let me know what you think about it. If you like it for your family, we love it. I hope y'all have enjoyed this video and that you'll stay tuned and come back for more. I've got a lot of side dishes and some more main dish casseroles and so forth that I cook that I'm going to share My with you. My mama used to bake for the public, she called it. She took orders and baked. She catered weddings. And I have a lot of her recipes, too, for sweets. So we'll have a lot of desserts and just good country cooking. And I want y'all to stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And come back. I'll try for a while. I'm going to do one a day. So y'all come back tomorrow and see what's cooking in my red kitchen.